Adopted as an infant, Robert Edmondson grew up in New Jersey, raised heavily in a military family where Army values were at the forefront. Like his adopted father, who spent 20 years in the military, Edmondson felt a calling to serve his country. After enlisting in the Army, he quickly rose through the ranks, completing tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. While back home, he and his wife raised two beautiful sons. It was his eldest son, Robert III, who, after becoming curious about his family's heritage, took a DNA test that changed his father's life forever. When it revealed his father had not one, but two biological brothers. But the real shock came when the two-star general found out one of his brothers was a colonel in the army, a soldier who he'd served with in the same division. Army Major General Robert Edmondson II and his brother, Colonel Eric Jackson. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you for your service and thank you for sharing the story. Uh, Major General Edmondson, my, I could not, I had to read it six times. I could not believe the turn of events in your lives. Um, more than five decades, you thought you were an only child. And one day, when your wife told you that she'd found a biological family member, describe what that was like for you and that you had two brothers on top of that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question. And you know, Tamron, thank you for this opportunity. And, and I'd like to begin by, uh, again, and just reinforcing the thanks that uh, we have uh, in people and organizations like yours uh, for recognizing um, the 19 million veterans that we have across this great country. And, uh, and, and for you to go out of your way to, uh, again, recognize one of our heroes like you did just in the earlier segment, you know, brings joy to my heart. Oh. So, again, on behalf of the Army, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, on to uh, those emotions that I felt the day that I came home. Uh, so just to kind of set the stage for you, uh, I literally came home from work. I came home from travel. I had my luggage in my hand. Uh, and I walk through the door as I as I do when I come home from the trip, put my luggage down. Uh, and my wife just happened to be waiting for me uh, in the dining room this time. And she was seated behind the computer and she looked over at me and she said, I need you to sit down. Oh. Now, we've been married for 30 years. <laughs> and this is the first time that I ever, ever walked through the door and heard my wife with that tone and that look ask me to immediately sit down. So I knew something pretty special was about to happen. My heart began to race a little bit because I had an idea of, of what she was doing, what she was up to. Oh. And she found out that, yes, I, I not only uh, have brothers, but I have a sibling who's actually in the Army. And she was uh, deeply concerned at that time uh, as to uh, where, where this was going to go. Yeah. And she was concerned because uh, she knew uh, what I didn't know at that time, that we served together in the Army. Uh, we served together uh, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, as paratroopers. Uh, we were members of the same fraternity. Uh, and uh, I tell you what, uh, I, I really can't explain uh, the emotions, uh, the full range, if you could only imagine. It's the shock. I mean, I can't imagine. Colonel Jackson, you two share the same father, Edward Jackson, who was searching for your brother until he passed away in 2007. You, keep, you kept searching, and just a few weeks ago, you finally met him for the first time in person. I mean, how do you describe what that feels like. Cameron, uh, first of all, I do want to echo my brother's sentiments uh, by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for what you're doing uh, for you, your show, your audience, for recognizing uh, what we do uh, in our profession of arms and defending this great nation of ours. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those initial moments uh, when uh, I found out that Robert was my brother and we met, uh, you know, I think, you know, there, there's, there's, there's an old proverb that says that there is no greater love uh, than a man lay down his life for his friends, man or a woman lay down his life for his friends. And, uh, and, and as, a, as a brother of arms, we kind of expect that uh, from our fellow soldiers. And to know that one of your brothers in arms was also my biological brother, oh. uh, that first word, love. No greater love than this. That first word, love, is what really characterized the relationship that I was building with my newfound brother, who I've been looking for uh, for decades. 
Oh. My dad had always been open and transparent uh, that we had a brother uh, mm. born in Germany. And, uh, and again, uh, when I was in Germany, uh, maybe about 10 years ago, I looked for him because my anticipation was that he was still in Germany. We're back with Army Major General Robert Edmondson II, who recently found out through a DNA test that he has two biological brothers, and one of them is Colonel Eric Jackson. He unknowingly served with him in the same Army division. Their third brother, Brian Jackson, joins us. What a handsome group of men, <laughs> I have to tell you. Oh, my God. Brian, um, you spent years searching for your older brother, and you say you'd be walking around the street, and you would often wonder, could he be my brother? Could this person be my brother? That just touched me to hear you say that, that it was just something that never left your mind. Exactly. Um, wherever I would be, uh, if I would see someone who would favor me and my dad, I would often wonder, could that be my brother? Mm. Um, with that thought, it always permeated my mind for decades, for decades. You said that you would look at your brother now that you're together and you see your father's eyes in his eyes. Brian, what does that mean, knowing that your father wanted you all to one day be in the same room and know each other and to see the eyes of your dad in him? It's hard to find the words, but when I first saw Robert, I immediately saw my dad, and I started to get teary-eyed oh. um, when I noticed that. Uh, but if my dad was alive today, uh, he would definitely be crying because he would see the unity of all three of us together again oh. and finally seeing his older son. Yeah. Major General Edmondson, you went from being an only child to now the eldest in this group. And as I've heard, Brian says the responsibilities of being the big brother have transferred all to you. Are you, sir, ready for the responsibility of being the big brother here? <laughs> I accept the challenge. <laughs> I am absolutely <laughs> prepared to be. We've had the conversation. Um, that's one of the points that I wanted to make sure that, that I got right from the very beginning. I didn't want to step on uh, Brian's toes here. Uh, Brian has been the <laughs> eldest brother for uh, five plus decades. And, and who's this person coming in from the outside to take over? Uh, but, uh, you know, to, to my surprise in loving fashion, uh, he handed the baton to me on day one. <laughs> I love it. Um, Colonel Jackson, we've talked a lot about what it meant for the three of you. What does it mean for your family members? Because this it did start with um, someone going in and looking at a DNA test. What does it mean for the whole family, the cousins, everybody, and the children? You know, Tamron, we are a military family through and through. And November happens, not only does Veterans Day happen uh, here in, in the month of November, but November is also Military Family Month. Yeah. And, and through and through, my mom, uh, being an Army wife uh, uh, for 40 years, as uh, she and my dad were married, uh, both uh, Ellen, my new sister-in-law, uh, and my wife, Tanya, are Army spouses. My wife is also an Army veteran. And, and we have representation across our entire family uh, for all the branches of the service. And, and all of my cousins who have served currently uh, and, and who, are, or, or who have served in the past, uh, they are absolutely uh, ecstatic about the news of, of a new family member um, and the fact that he's Army, because now the Army ratio goes up in, in, in the family. <laughs> I heard, though, now, Colonel Jackson, that your brother technically outranks you. And you said that during your first phone call together, he had to tell you to stop calling him sir. <laughs> That is true. Uh, that is so true. So I, I have known known of Robert for for years, and, uh, and as a matter of fact, when we were in the 82nd Airborne Division, I think it's fair to say that uh, again from afar, I knew who he was. I was on division staff, and and he was a company commander. Again, what all of us young captains aspire to be. And quite frankly, I had a man crush on him. I was like, that guy is squared away. And so years later, I found out he's my brother. So yes, uh, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely wonderful uh, that I still get a chance to not only respect him uh, through Sir as my big brother, uh, but also with his military rank, uh -huh. but more importantly, 
the, the, the relationship that we now have, uh, familiar relationship, is the one that really matters. Oh. And, and he will always be so much. I love it. Well, you gentlemen have me. I I'm smiling ear to ear. My cheeks hurt because this is just such a joyful moment. Congratulations on finding each other and finding this very special bond of brothers.